Hi, my name is Daniel, and I'm not a musician. It's a difficult thing to admit, but I just don't have a musical bone in my entire body. That doesn't stop me from trying, though. I do enjoy making random sounds for no other reason than to entertain myself. The only problem with my current MIDI keyboard is that it doesn't have enough inputs. So let's fix that and build a new MIDI controller powered by an Arduino. Yeah. Okay, to start off, what the heck is this MIDI I keep talking about? Brace yourself for some quick theory, and I promise you some more tangible making will come later in the video. MIDI is a huge topic to cover, but it is essentially both a communications protocol, a type of digital interface, and a type of connector all rolled into one. It is a way to connect electronic instruments together, sending information in between them and interpreting them to eventually make sounds, to make music. For all intents and purposes, MIDI in this video will only be seen as a communications protocol as we will use an Arduino to speak MIDI via USB to a DAW, a digital audio workstation on the computer. It is important to note though that MIDI does not transfer any actual audio, but only transfers data enabling devices to speak with one another. But don't worry, I will cover this in more detail a little bit later. Looking at different MIDI devices, we have everything from electronic keyboards, synthesizers, drum machines, samplers and various effect devices. The reason why I'm making this device is because my electronic keyboard simply does not have enough controls for me to easily adjust various aspects in my DAW. For instance, if I want to change the sustain of the instrument I'm playing, I have to physically take my mouse and alter that parameter of the instrument. Using a knob on a separate controller mapped to the sustain value of the instrument would be much easier. And that is something that can easily be done using MIDI. That's just scraping the surface though, as there are many more parameters that can be controlled using digital knobs and controls, which could be beneficial to break out into a tangible interface. So when it comes to selecting what you want in your MIDI controller, the sky is literally the limit. If you can use your Arduino to read it, you can probably interpret it in some way to send it as a MIDI event to your computer. Personally, I want a lot of buttons to be able to make something like a drum pad, and this old phone keypad will do just awesomely. The job of the knobs will be played by a few potentiometers, but we're also adding some more bells and whistles, including a joystick, which I will go into a little bit more later. Once you've decided what to put into your MIDI controller, I highly encourage you to build functional prototypes. Make sure you can get your Arduino to send MIDI events properly using the inputs you have chosen. There is a lot of information online about what goes into a MIDI event message and how to use your Arduino to send it to your computer. So I won't go really into this in this video too deeply, but I will leave some useful links down in the description. Now for something a bit more tangible. Once you have chosen what you want as inputs and verify that they work, we need something to house them in. You could just take a cardboard box or a cookie tin or anything even remotely box shaped and mount your hardware in there. Me, I want to go a little bit more fancy. So let's break out the laser cutter, start up the woodworking montage music and let her rip.
With all that done and dusted, let's install some electronics. There are different ways to go by this, to either completely make the circuitry outside the enclosure, test it and then install everything into the box. I chose the slightly more chaotic way of installing the components without attached wires, heck even without programming everything as one coherent unit, and I will do all my soldering and connection in situ. It will be a little bit more cramped to work like that, but it will ensure that I can run wires a bit more efficiently, and it's a lot more easy to install individual components without everything connected. Some of the components attach with just a nut on the other side of the hole or with screws to the top, but the keypad as well as the rotor encoders I used has no such thing. Therefore some extra parts were glued in the back to allow them to be held in by screws from the inside of the box. Because all the different inputs I chose require a lot of pins on the Arduino, a simple Arduino Uno board would unfortunately not suffice for this project. Luckily there is a big brother to the Uno, the Arduino Mega, which comes with 54 digital pins and 16 analog pins, as opposed to the Uno's 14 and 6, so it should be more than enough for what I need to do. So what do you think, is it time for another montage? I can kind of feel it building up, right? Let's do this! A wiring and soldering montage! Here we go! I know I kind of brushed over all of this, but at the end of the day, how you wire your project will differ from how I wired mine, so the relevance of a step-by-step -step instruction is kind of limited. If you're feeling especially creative though, especially if you're building something a bit more permanent, why not take the time to design your own circuit board shield for the Arduino to make connecting the whole project a lot more easy and robust. Order your PCB from PCBWay today. Since it's the holiday season, they're offering a free gift in your package, as well as various discounts, all the way until the end of 2019. PCBWay recently celebrated their 5th year anniversary, and with the quality they're delivering, I'm sure they will be around for a long time to come. Anyway, once you have everything attached and all the wires connected properly, you can actually get to properly program this thing. As you may recall, I built some functional prototypes, but they only really have snippets of code for each individual part. It is now time to bring that all together. I will not dive deep into the Arduino code either, but if you want you can download the Arduino sketch from the link down in the description. I try to comment it as much as possible to make it not too difficult to understand, but the focus was to get my MIDI controller to work, not to make neat and beautiful code. The basic idea behind the code is to read the various controls as inputs, map those inputs into a format that a DAW can understand, in other words MIDI, and output it over a USB serial connection to the computer. It does take a lot of going back and forth, making small incremental steps and changes to make sure that each part works properly before moving on to the next. I did end up wiring some stuff backwards, but that's easily fixable in code if you don't feel like breaking out the soldering iron again. To get the Arduino to actually communicate with your computer using MIDI, we will need two more pieces of software. The first is called Loop MIDI 
and we can essentially think of it as a virtual MIDI cable. It is what we will see in our DAW as the MIDI input device. To be able to send our MIDI serial data to the Loop MIDI software, we need a program called Hairless MIDI to Serial Bridge, which does exactly what the name suggests, and I guess it's hairless? It essentially reads MIDI events sent over a serial port and bridges it over to Loop MIDI so the data is visible in our DAW. Okay, I've said DAW so many times now. DAW, or D-A-W, stands for Digital Audio Workstation, and it's essentially a piece of software which you use for recording, editing and producing audio and music. There are lots and lots of different DAWs, some simple and some very complex. For more information I can only suggest checking out the links in the description. For this video I will be using Ableton Live, which is a popular and fairly straightforward DAW. I will not be doing any recording though, but rather only using it to receive MIDI and make sounds with its built-in instruments and VST plugins. Whatever you choose to do with it from there is up to you. But enough with all these technical aspects, let's actually see what these controls can do. Wait, wait a minute! There's one very important step left. We just can't leave the controller looking like this. Bring on the knobs. That is so much better. Now we're ready to start playing around. In Ableton it's extremely easy to map a MIDI controller to almost anything in the interface. First, make sure that the little indicator up at the top right is blinking when you use your controller, as that indicates that there are MIDI events being received. Next, click the MIDI button next to it and parts of the interface will change color. Clicking on any of these areas and then moving the controller you want to attach it to will bind these two together. Do the same for other things you want to attach and click the MIDI button again when you're done. Now you're ready to either use it as an instrument by itself with the built-in keypad, or use it alongside your MIDI keyboard to adjust various aspects of your instruments as you're chasing that perfect sound. And as we know, there are no shortcuts to the perfect sound, but this sure is one step in the right direction. I'm using an excellent free VST plugin called Ragnarök, which is emulating an analog synthesizer from the 80s. I've mapped many of the different knobs in the plugin to different knobs on the controller. Even though we only have six knobs on the controller, one of them holds a secret. The top left one is a rotary switch with six positions. Flipping the switch to different positions changes the two rotary encoders over to occupy other modes, essentially making these two knobs into 12, just not simultaneously. The joystick works the same as you would expect the pitch and modulation wheels on a regular MIDI keyboard to work, but you can definitely set it up to do other things if you so desire. The keypad can be used essentially as keyboard keys. The little switch transposes, or moves, the keys of the keypad up or down an octave, making it possible to play the full gamut of notes of a keyboard with just these 12 keys. Though, because of the mapping, it may make a whole lot more sense to use the keypad as a drum pad rather than an actual keyboard. And that's about all there is to it, so instead of me torturing you with my lack of musical artistry, grab an Arduino, set forth out into the world and get midiing. Thank you so much for watching, I really hope you liked this video as I have others along a similar vein planned in the future. Until then, check out some other videos, subscribe if you haven't, and why not take a gander at what's happening on Instagram. Until next time!